Just a quick note here before we jump into the first route redistribution lab of several I've got for you in this section. RIP for version 4 was actually removed from the NP exams for, uh, for the route exam anyway during the great refresh of 2015. I disagree with that removal, but they did not ask me. Uh, it's AD of 120 makes it perfect to illustrate route redistribution regarding OSPF and EIGRP, things that you need to see. Uh, RIP is still in use in local area networks out there, and RIP NG, RIP for IP version 6, is still on the route exam. So I have included RIP version 2 in this section's labs. Certainly nothing complex. Uh, my config uh, for RIP is basically the version 2 command to make it send and receive um, uh, version 2 updates. No auto for no auto summary, same behavior as EIGRP, and then the network commands, and that's pretty much it outside of redistribute. And speaking of redistribute, I've got it on the board here before we see it live, and you'll note that we've, with redistribute static under RIP, um, I don't have to set anything. I can just do redistribute static, there's the CR, and technically it's a legal command. Practically, it's not because you're not going to get much done because you didn't define a seed metric. And finally, you're just thinking, stop talking about it and tell me why I need one. Well, here's why you need it with RIP. RIP's sole metric is hop count, which is why you don't see a lot of RIP IP version 4 on WANs out there because RIP considers a hop to a 56, through a 56K link to be the same as a hop through a T1 or an E1 line. Uh, and that's not a very uh, sophisticated metric, especially for day today's networks. So if we take a simple OSPF route with a cost of 74, I know the illustration says 66, but let's just go with 74 up here, that would be what? What two interfaces would give us that very common route cost? A serial T1 link, that would be 64, and then just a regular Ethernet link, that's another 10, that's 74. That's about as small as OSPF gets. Well, RIP is just going to throw up, faint, or both if you try to give it a route with a metric of 74 because RIP considers a metric of 16 to be unreachable. So it would consider 74 to be super duper duper unreachable. And not many OSPF routes, or frankly, especially EIGRP routes, uh, are ever going to have a metric of less than 16. So what we have to do with RIP is give it a value that it understands, and that's where the seed metric comes in. And by the way, just a quick reminder, the seed metric does increment as the route travels through its new domain. Uh, we don't get to see that a lot in these labs because we're concentrating on the redistribution itself, but that's just a quick reminder. And we're going to see all this in action in this particular lab to begin with. Routers 1 and 2 are communicating over the 172.12.123.0/24 network, and that is a RIP version 2 domain. Uh, so we've got all the VLSM support we need. Routers 1 and 3 are communicating over the 3110/24 network. That's an OSPF domain. Also, router 3 has a 172.12.34.0/24 segment. That's the one we want to advertise into RIP version 2. We'd also like for RIP, uh, excuse me, for router 2 to have that link 3110/24. But we need to do something extra to make that happen. Because how does router 1 see that link? Router 1 sees it as a connected link. So just redistributing OSPF into RIP won't put the 3110 link in there. We need to do a redistribute connected. Let's get that OSPF link over where it ought to be first, though. And you can see I just verified my neighbor relationship. I have my route, the whole bit. And now I'll do some route redistribution. I'm going to go into router rip. I've already got the version 2, no auto, and network uh, commands in there, so we're good to go there. And let's do this. Redistribute. I want to show you the options here. And quite a few of these you're certainly familiar with. A few you may not have seen yet. Nothing wrong with that. And also note, though, beyond the dynamic routing protocols, we also have connected and static. And we do have a route map. We're not going to use that in this course but you can use a route map to tie down which routes you want redistributed and which ones you don't. You might have 15 OSPF routes. Maybe you only want three to actually be sent into the RIP domain. You can actually do that with a route map. So let's do a redistribute OSPF. We got to put the process ID, you know that. And we got a couple of interesting looking options there, but we'll just go with that. Redistribute OSPF1. 
Now let's go over to router two. And we don't see anything. What's another reason we're not crazed with RIP? Why don't you see it in a lot of wide area networks? Slow convergence. It never hurts when you're working with RIP to give it a little incentive with clear IP route asterisk. And you do have to put a space between route and asterisk as we just saw. No extra charge for that lesson. Now let's take a look at our RIP table. And we still don't see it. Now we know why. We didn't put a seed metric in there. But I wanted to point out to you that the router didn't tell us to. So often Cisco routers and switches, if we, if we go a little astray, the router or switch brings us back a little bit. Says, well, you know, maybe you want to do this. Or are you sure you want to do that in some cases? We saw that when we were redistributing uh, subnets involving RIP. When we did a redistribute connected subnet, say, into OSPF. But if we just put redistribute connected, the router told us, hey, you're only going to get classful routes this way. So they're like, oh yeah, you know, put the subnets option. Well, we didn't get any reminder here with RIP. So what we're going to do is head back to router one. First off, we're going to do a little housekeeping and take that one command off. And I'm going to do a redistribute OSPF1. And what I'm going to do is set that metric. Metric for redistributed routes makes perfect sense. And with RIP, you know it's only going to let you set it from 0 to 16. And you shouldn't set it to 16 anyway. So we'll do a 2. And that's kind of guesswork. I'm not going to lie to you. I mean, you can look at your network and say, okay, here's how many hops it's going to be uh, before you get there. So here's the seed metric I'm coming up with. So we've got that. We've got everything set, ready to go there. Let's do a show IP route rip. And there are the routes. Didn't have to clear the routing table. They're already there. We waited two seconds long enough. <laughs> They've been in the table literally two seconds. And there's our 3110 network. That, of course, was the connected one. And then 172.12.34.0, the one off of router 3. That is an OSPF route according to router 1. Now... One thing you really want to do with redistribution that you might not do with every other protocol. Let's be honest here. Uh, I do it too in the lab. You, you see the route with some of your protocol labs and that's enough. Now I would still go ahead and ping them sometimes, but hey, I'm guilty of it myself. I'm working on something. I see the routes like, okay, I'm good to go. So when you're doing route redistribution, you always want to send pings. And if you have time, and if you don't have time, make the time to ping a couple of destinations on each one of these remote networks. Because it's not enough to see it in the table. Because just because we see it in the table, that means we know how to get there. If we send packets, the packets are going to know how to get there. They might not know how to come back. So let's revisit our, our drawing here a little bit. What I like to do in a lab environment is start pinging the closest interface and then I'll go out from there. If you start at the farthest interface and work your way back, you know, that's perfectly fine. So I'm going to go ahead and ping both interfaces on the 3110 link and then I'll try to ping router 3 at 172.12.34.3. Okay, so far so good. I can ping router 1's interface on that segment. And it's never good when it hangs right there after uh, that timeout. It's never good. So it looks like I can't ping 3113. Let's try 172.12. And it was 34, just making absolutely sure. 12.34.3, thank you. Darn decaf. So right now, it looks like we can't ping either interface on router 3. We have the route in the routing table, and we'll just recheck that because, you know, your eyes can play tricks on you. There they are, but I can't ping 3113, and I can't ping 172.12.34.3. So why not? I'm going to show you a fantastic way to figure this out at the beginning of the very next video, including a bonus command. You'll love it. See you on the next vid.